scheduling the problem just says that you have n jobs and every job is scheduled to be to like it has a start time and has an end time and when this job is done you obtain a profit as a profit of i so basically a job will be there and every job corresponding will have a start time end time and a profit corresponding to it okay great now um, so basically you have an array having all these elements now you have to return the maximum profit you can take such that no two jobs in the subset with overlap in time ranges what we mean by this is that as you can see where we have these four jobs now we have to take some jobs out of it such that or basically you have to take some jobs out of it such that Firstly, profit is maximized and also let's say I can just take okay 50th profit, 70th profit, and 40th profit. Now my profit or basically take this also. So 50 plus 70, 120, 160, 170. Are in this is the profit? No. When you took all these four jobs, so you can see this is overlapping. So you cannot take overlapping jobs. That is what you have to make sure, right? That you cannot take these overlapping jobs itself. So you have to take some jobs such that they give you maximum profit and they're not overlapping. And uh, it just says that if you choose a job ending at time X, then you will be able to start another job starting with time X. Like if it is ending here, then I can just start off another job at the same time. I don't need to start off with other job at let's say time four. That is the condition. Okay. So problem saying is this. Now the very brute force approach is I don't know which job to take. I, I never know which job to take. Like it is never in my hand how to know which job to take. So first we basically think I have the input in the form of a start time, end time and profit. I'll convert and make jobs out of it. I'll have job one, job two, job three like this. Okay. I can have these jobs. Now I know I want to take some jobs. I can just consider this as a block, as a block, as a block. Now I have to take some blocks out of it. Again, I have, let's say N blocks. I have to take some blocks out of it with some condition. Now, do you remember this with the exact same kind of thing? Okay. You have N numbers. You have to take some numbers out of it such that the X, Y, Z is there. So basically for every number, you will have two options. Either you will take that number or you will skip that number, take that number or skip that number, take it or skip it, take it or skip it. So that, okay, out of all these numbers and with some condition, okay, the numbers should not be overlapping and such that it may result in some function giving a maximum value or minimum value. So it is the same way a zero one knapsack, take it or not take it, take it or not take it. So the same way I will have, okay, See, every block is representing one job. I have named also, okay, job one, job two, job three, job four, and job five. These are five jobs which, which, which I have. And for every job, I will have two options. Either I will take it or I will not take it. Either I'll take it or I will not take it. And the same way I will go about it, okay? Take it or skip it, or basically not take it. Now, when I say skip it, okay, what usually happens if you are at this job, ID, Let's name these jobs with the index because these are the arrays, right? So you can name as the indexes. Okay. If you are at this I now, if you plan to skip it, then you just move on to the next index, which is I plus one. And then you can start off again. Okay. Take it, not take it. All that stuff, right? It's the same knapsack. If you plan to take it, then what you will do? Okay. But yeah, I plan to take this job. So when you plan to take any job corresponding to that job, you add your profit. But next thing which you have to do is move on to the next job. So ideally, bhaiya, by this, okay, I just move on to my ID plus one. As simple as that. Okay, that makes sense. But what if, what if, what if your ID plus one is overlapping, which means you won't be able to move to ID plus one. Here the job two is not overlapping. So you can easily move on to job two. Right. Okay. But yeah, I move to job two. But, but yeah, if in job two itself, itself, I will have an option take not take. Let's say if I take this job two also, then which job to move on? Shall I move on to job three? No, I cannot do it. It's overlapping. I cannot move on to any job which is overlapping to me. If I take some job, I cannot move to any other job which is overlapping to me. So I have to move on to next job, which is four, which is again overlapping to me. To again next job five which is again overlapping to me so i will have to check okay which is overlapping which is not which which can be a tricky task but yeah okay that makes sense that makes sense that okay um 
we have a take not take so maybe that is a simple recursion which we can apply on these jobs and then we have just two options take not take so maybe we can also apply memoization but is it sure that it is actually a case of memoization which means it's a it's it's a case of db let's see for this in the same example as i mentioned above let let's say if i have this above diagram same job same number job now again i have the job j1 i am standing at the id id index 0 i have the first job which is j1 i will take it or not take it which means skip it now if i take this now for sure i will have a j1 with me next job i will have is j2 shall i take it shall i not take it okay if i take it i will move to i will have a job j1 j2 which means corresponding to job j1 and j2 i will have a profit and okay if i not take it i will only have a job j1 okay uh, for a job j3 can i take it okay no you cannot because you have to skip it um if i don't take it i will have a j1 j2 why cannot because j2 and j3 are overlapping so for sure with j2 i cannot i can never take a j3 maybe in future as you can see if i don't take my j2 then i will have only j1 then i can take a j3 so you can see j1 and j3 has come that's okay that's okay now same way uh, for j4 neither it, it can be come here neither it can come here because j4 is actually overlapping with j1 and j2 both so neither in any ways as you can see j4 because it is overlapping with j1 it is over overlapping with j2 so j4 cannot come with j1 or j2 now if i don't take my j4 then i will have a j1 j3 in last i will have j5 so if i take it i will have a j1 j3 j5 now for sure if you just look at this tree itself which means that you will be computing the value for j2 for j3 j5 and then whatsoever is maximum you will provide or basically give that value to the parent which is actually j1 so it is something that okay j1 j2 and j3 j5 when i say j it's me it, it means a job now job this i will compute okay what's the maximum profit with this maximum profit with this and i can just store that so that i can use it with j1 and let's say the same way let's say j4 would have been there and it would have used let's say j3 j5 so i would have used this j3 j5 memoized it and would have given the value directly to j4 so for sure we will be needing to memoize the portion of jobs which we are taking now okay memoization okay so up till so far we have seen that we have two options take not take usually in this you should be without even thinking of thinking even a second thought you should be able to think okay we will have to apply memoization or basically dp in this now although for you i have explained with a with a specific diagram that okay yeah for sure we can have a repeating sub problem in this but coming on that uh, how will okay you take a job then how are you moving on to the next job and did, did we look on to it did we look on to it that okay if we take a job how are we moving on to the next job are we trying for every job's next one or like how are we searching for the next job which means okay skipping a job is just okay if i skip this job i will simply move on to next job which means if i am j1 i'll skip it okay i'll move on to j2 which is the just next id id plus one but if i take this if i take a j1 if i take a j1 then i will have to search for a next job i will have to search for a next job which is after this index so I have to search for the next job because I have to move on to the next. If I take this, I have to move to some ID, right? Like what's what's the next ID? Next ID, what's the next ID? I have to move on. Next ID should be, which is not overlapping with this current ID. And how I can find it? I have to search for other job whose index or basically whose starting value, whose S, S of I, whose S of I is more than or equal to this E1 so i will have to search for a next job starting at index even or more now again we have to search for a next job again we have two searches linear search or binary search if i do a linear search i will take a o of n time which means i have to go on to all of my jobs if i do a binary search it will take a o of n log n time Sorry, it will take a log n time which means i will just do a like i know i have n jobs i can just do a binary search to go on to some job which i know i will be going on to because it's ending index obviously it's end time is more than equal to my start time but 
to do a binary search, you cannot simply do a binary search on any array. You have to sort the array first. So basically, I have to sort my jobs array, which I have made my jobs, as you know, my job of i will look like my s of i, e of i, and profit of i. It looks like this. Now, if it is like this, it needs to be sorted. So I will have to sort my jobs array on the basis of my start time. Great. Um, that also makes sense. So what I will do is I will sort my job on the basis of start time. So it, it will become job one. It will become job two. See, I have just cut the names and this may okay. Now this is a job one, job two. This is a job three. This is a job four. This is a job five. Now it is the sorted array. Now let's see how we will do a take not take. If I take this, if I take a job one, if I take a job one, then I have to do a binary search for another job having my start time which is more than equal to my this specific end time so as you can see as job one is there i'll do a binary search binary search will say okay the next job is actually a j3 whose start time is more than equal to as you can see more than equal to my end time even so my this if i take this i will get a profit of p1 and then my next id will become a job three starting which means solve starting from job three that will be my if i take it if i take it and for sure again if let's say on job three itself i will have again two options either i take it or i don't take it if i take it if i take it if let's say see this is the answer for this is the this will be the answer for solve of j1 solve of j1 which will be which will be maximum of either i take it either i take it comma either i skip it skip it as in simple move on to the next job as in if i am at job one move on to the next job which is job two as simple as that now in indirectly in my code i will represent this as a id this will be the id plus one that's it now this will be obtained by do, by doing a binary search for on this specific index of this job id right okay now bhaiya okay if i had this job 3 again it will be maximum of two options two options either 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 i take this either i take this which is either I take the job 3 or i skip it if i take the job 3 i will obtain a profit of job 3 and then after i have to binary search okay any of the starting index which is more than equal to this so i'll do a lower bound of e5 lower bound of e5 will give me okay you can start solving from j of what was this value j of uh, uh, j of the, this was 5 let's say okay so starting from j5 you can solve it or if you skip it if you skip it which means if you skip the j3 then you can simply start for j4 which is id plus 1 so if this is id if this is again id it will be a id plus 1 and this will be the lower bound lower bound on the jobs array which means lower bound again I, I can write that lower bound on the jobs array which means jobs dot begin dot jobs jobs dot begin jobs dot end and searching for a what value for the start for the ending value of this specific job which is our job of id so i'll just say that my job id of this end value I do I need to do a binary search lower bound lower bound as in greater than or equal to this ending index of this specific ID. I can get a new I can get a I can get okay by this I can by this I will be landing onto a value which has a starting index more than or equal to this end index which will actually give me a new ID which I can go to and that's how I can simply solve it. Let's see the code it's pretty simple uh, exactly same firstly as you can see I will have my jobs vector which I will make the blocks as, as I showed you so I will just for a for for my jobs vector of vector I will just have for every vector inside it which means every block will actually be a start time end time and a profit start time end time and a profit okay I will have a start time s of i e of i and a p of i profit now this will be my jobs of i so this is a vector of vector now as you saw that to apply a binary search and by search is needed because i am reducing my o of n search time to o of log n search time that is an improvement which i will tell the interview that how i can improve my code okay as you remembered because you have to do a binary search on this start time itself right you will do a binary search you will do a binary search on this starting although you can also 
if you are good with it you can use your lower bound to do a binary search on that itself but to make the code easier you can do okay because you know that you have to do a binary search on the start time and find out the first start time such that it's such that that index is more than x so it's such that the value we say start value is more than equal to this end value which you will pass it so you will have to have this as your your entire range in which you will do a binary search will be your start time range although you can also put the jobs array itself you don't have to make this new array but just to make the code simpler you can use this now coming on back that you have your start times you have your jobs and you have your profit it is just your end starting off with the first index job one now i'll simply go on to my recursion this recursion will simply say okay if you have reached the very end if you have reached the very end great man great great simply return a zero because you have gone all to all the things and simply if you have completed all the jobs and so if you have reached the end there is no profit you can obtain any further just return a zero profit because any any further you cannot obtain any profit if you have for sure you are memoizing for every index this is the only thing which is variable so for sure you will just memoize that dp of id now you will have two options maximum profit will be maximum of either you skip it now if you skip it you simply go on to next index which is id plus one you were at id you'll go to id plus one simply skipping the id or other thing is you take this specific index which means you take this job if you take this job the profit corresponding to that id you will add this is the profit as you can see index two on a specific index two on a specific job is actually your profit itself profit itself so you just added the profit and then you went on and do okay just solve for just to solve for next index now this next index i have found out by doing a binary search on my start as you can see it's just a lower bound lower bound saying this value greater than or equal to this value give me the iterator minus will give me the index so i have got the next index now this next index i can use to go on and put it here so that okay if i take it i would be knowing in log n time where to go on to my next index and that's how i can simply get the maximum profit and simply memoize it back again and that's how i can simply get this solved cool as you can see the time will be o of n as you can see the dp state is nothing but you are going on to all the indexes which means all the jobs and log n for the search if you had used a linear search it, it would have taken o of n time which means it would have given you o of n square but you can do it in simple log n time and that's how you can simply solve it in o of n log n time and ultimately space is o of n and that's how you can simply get this solved cool i hope that you guys watch bye bye